These chameleon markers have a color changing feature that may give Copics a run for the money, but is it just a gimmick? Let's find out. <laughs> Greetings people of the internet, I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. Welcome to the underground laboratory where we create robots, alien zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. And sometimes when we create those things, we use markers, or at least I do, because I love markers. If you know anything about me, that's one of my favorite mediums is markers, and I've done a lot of different market tests on this uh, channel here. And uh, it's usually, I kind of have my go-to, which is my Copic markers, because that's kind of the, you know, that's the, the one everyone aspires to be like. Uh, but we have a contender, my friends. This is something that I have been, my eyes have been on this for a while. I've been really wanting to get a set of these. And I have right now with me the 52 Deluxe full set of chameleon markers that I want to unbox. And look at this thing. Look at this. It's got a little nice little case. But uh, we'll get into that. We're going we're gonna to get into this whole thing because it's pretty impressive. But uh, yeah, so I want to take these markers and they've got, they, they do something a little different. They can actually change color, like a gradient changing color and everything. But I want to see, can we do that with like illustrations? Can I use that for my purposes? And how does that stack up to my favorite uh, Copic markers? Um, let's take a look. All right, these are the chameleon color tone, color changing markers. This is the complete deluxe set. It's uh, 52 markers. And uh, yeah, let's delve into this. Um, first of all, I just want to say how impressive the packaging is. I mean, if you can see, it's got a really cool like spot varnish. The logo is really nice. Um, you know, so far, just from a design standpoint, it's pretty cool. Uh, you can kind of see it's got got a little you know carrying case here um, yeah I really like this matte black with the spot varnish so let's open this thing up let's see what color thing have to flip them around here all right let's put that up there Pull the packaging off. all right so this is these are the markers here and Again, this is just really impressive, the, the look of this set. Um, let me pull one of these markers out here. We'll take a look at this. But, but yeah, I mean, just the design of these things, it, I mean, I'm kind of, kind of blown away. It's, I mean, it's almost like an opening, like when you do an unboxing of like an Apple product or something, just the care and everything that went into the design and everything. I mean, uh, in comparing them to the Copics, and I'm not going to do a full review of the Copic markers because they're sort of the gold standard, the industry standard, and most people kind of know what they do. But this is this is my set. This is the I think 72 marker set. Um, so this one comes with a little less markers, but the idea is they they can color change, so you get a little more out of them. Um, but yeah, so these are the Copic markers. I mean, they're cool, and there's a lot of knockoffs and stuff that, that look similar. So it's kind of, now it's kind of like, yeah, these are, these are cool, but from a design standpoint. And that's, I know that's not like a huge deal, I mean, how they look and everything. Um, but it is, it is cool to open up a box like this and see something that, that really, you know, the industrial design beside, behind these is really cool looking. So anyway, so this is one of the markers here. Uh, you have um, the color on the top, both there's a number and, you know, baby blue or whatever. They have like actual names for each color, um, like the Copics do as well. Um, and so we've got, uh, this is the brush tip. It's a little different than the Copic marker. Let me see if I can so you can see that a little better. Um, it's not quite as long. It's a little shorter, sharper, and stubbier. So, um, on first impression, I haven't I haven't used these yet, but uh, it looks like I can get maybe a finer tip, but maybe not as a wide of line. So uh, we'll have to see how that compares to the Copic markers. Let me let me bring out the Copics just in case you're not familiar. I'll pull one of these out. I'll get, a, get another blue here. So uh, let's see. So here is the Copic brush tip. So, um, so far I kind of, I'm kind of liking this a little better. Now there's probably a reason for the way the, the, the chameleons are designed the way they are. Um, and I think it just has to do with the whole color changing system. And, and likewise, when you look at the other tip here, it doesn't have a chisel tip, um, but it has, has sort of a bullet tip. So usually like with Copic markers, 
um, with the knockoffs and everything, there's usually, uh, you know, they don't, a lot of them don't have the brush tip, but they have the bullet tip. But they almost always have the chisel tip. Um, and this can come in handy. There's a lot of ways. I mean, I think most people prefer the brush, but the chisel does have its advantages, especially like, definitely if you like you're doing some kind of calligraphy or something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, before, you know, when I started markers, that was pretty much everything was the chisel tip. Now, the chameleon markers, they don't have the chisel tip, they have the bullet. So usually you get the bullet or the brush, you don't get both. Um, but I'm pretty sure the reason why I don't think they can do a chisel tip with these markers just because of the way the color changing is and I will show you that in a minute so basically you've got you know this is the marker part you've got your chisel or not your chisel you've got your your uh, brush tip your bullet tip and then this little cap when you pull that off you've got this thing here and this is a little color changing table or uh, chamber rather um, and as you can see uh, it's, it does kind of look like another bullet nib so basically the idea behind this is that it is it's basically like the you know the the um, colorless blender on the Copics now I do want to test one of the things that I want to experiment with is to see if you can get the same effect with the Copics by using the colorless blender um, just as you would these and I'll show you kind of how it works here um, so basically you're gonna pull um, you know what let me let me go back to this thing first just to kind of show you some other things with the box and everything what else it comes with before I do a demo because I'll break out the paper and everything but as you can see I mean doesn't that look awesome we'll put this guy back in here um, but the other cool thing is that it kind of folds in and I don't know if you can see this from the angle um, but it kind of folds in you can set it like this so you know your markers are more or less you know flat or you can put them flat if you want or whatever um, now I know a lot I get a lot of people commenting on my videos because they see my set of Copic markers on my shelf they're standing upright and uh, you really should have them flat because that way the marker the ink doesn't run away one, one way or the other um, and it's just the the reason why they're they're upright on my shelf like that is because here in the studio that shelf is so small there's really not a place for that so I know it's wrong but that's just kind of how it's have it set up but ideally you should have you should have your marker set flat so but at this angle I think this is sort of a, a good angle and everything and it's just it's really nice to see this um, again kudos to the company that makes the, these chameleon markers because um, yeah it's just really cool looking and also here what else do we have besides the markers um, this little box contains let's see what it's got here it's got some tweezers for changing out the nibs and some replacement nibs um, so that's cool that they give you those Copic doesn't really offer those although I have a feeling that these nibs may wear down a little more um, this larger set the uh, 52 marker set also comes with this which is the what are they calling it a detail marker so this is kind of like your your micron or you know so you've got two different tips here different sizes um, so if you want to draw with that you can and then in addition to the blenders that are contained in each marker they also have a color to splendor which let's see bullet nib and so it's the same nib so I was curious if about this one they might have a chisel tip but no but there's also a color to splendor if you want to use that for additional effects all right so let's uh, let's see how these things actually work um, I'm gonna pull up this guy here um, pull that over here get a sheet of paper here and let's give this a shot so uh, the thing with the thing as well as these are designed I'm kind of I'm surprised they didn't take into consideration that there you can't you can't stick the caps on the end here um, so really the caps just have to sort of sit here <laughs> which in working with these I have a feeling that um, I think you're gonna have to work fairly fast with these things um, so popping the caps on and off and all that maybe it, I don't know maybe it just makes sense to you know set them to the side and everything because I think you're gonna be working fairly quickly so um, but it would be nice if they snapped on the back and that's one of my biggest criticisms for most markers that do that and even my I think the Copics changed their design I have an older set so my Copic markers here um, 
you take the top off, they don't stick on there either. So I, as far as comparison, that's really hard to do because I've got an older set. I think the newer ones you can put the tips on the end. Mine, you can't because it, again, it's just an older set. So, uh, but anyway, so let's let's give this a shot. So um, I'm going to hold it like this first, but then I'm going to have to flip it. So basically, what you do is you just snap this thing in the chamber like this, and then you're going to hold it like so, just so the gravity will let the um, will let the colorless blender kind of flow into the, you know, whatever tip you're using, the color tip. So you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see here that it's changed color a little bit. I just bumped that camera. Um, but it starts to get a little lighter and you can hold it for like 10 or 15 seconds. So I've hold, held this a little bit longer, but let's give this a shot here. We're gonna start coloring and you can see it's pretty light. And then it's gonna gradually get darker. So it's got a nice, you can see there's a nice blend there. Really nice. All right. So yeah, I, that's a pretty cool effect. Um, now I want to, you know, I just want to see if you can do the same thing with the Copic markers, Copic markers, however you want to pronounce them. Um, so I'm going to, I think maybe use the chisel tip because it's a little wider. We'll see if that works because it's going to be a little harder to hold uh, because it doesn't snap in obviously we're just kind of testing this out so I'm gonna put the colors blender on there I'm just gonna hold it for a little while and I do see that the color of the marker is changing um, because like I said because of the shape of this tip it doesn't look like it's as even um, because it's a softer brush tip all right so uh, these weren't made for this but I just want to see if it works I don't know if you can tell how see how the tips lighter now so we're gonna see if we can get the same effect with the Copic markers I'm gonna go light and you sort of can I mean it's not it the, the color it doesn't you don't get as much of a gradient here um, but you can you can sort of Get a little bit of that look. I think. I think definitely the chameleons, just because they're made for that. I think they're gonna be. You're gonna get a smoother transition with the chameleons. But if you wanted to experiment with the Copic markers with that, it does. It is possible. So um, <laughs> I have a feeling that whoever invented the chameleon markers is probably playing around with these Copics or some other markers and tried that technique and said, "Oh, that's cool." But the problem is you got to kind of hold it together. And if you just had something that snaps in and make it a little easier. Um, so yeah, so there's a little bit of a comparison. I'm gonna do a little illustration too because I've seen some online demos and things and basically people are just using it to color in like, you know, what are coloring books or just doing this kind of stuff a little more crafty. Um, so I'm curious how it works with an illustration. Um, and I've, I've, got, I've got one that uh, I've been wanting to kind of throw some color on. So we're gonna give it a shot. We're gonna do uh, both the chameleon and the copics and see kind of how they compare um but yeah so far i mean these are i mean i'm really impressed so far uh i don't know how they work with illustrations or if it's just sort of a crafty thing because i think the timing is going to be the biggest thing because the problem with when you're working with illustrations is you know you're if you've got a certain area the problem is you kind of have you don't when I originally saw these, I thought the idea behind them was that, you know, it's all pressure based. So if you press a little lighter, it'll be, you know, it'll, it, it'll be super light like this. And if you press harder, it'll be like that. And ideally that would be the best marker. Um, most smart, like Copic markers, they can do that to a certain extent, but not much. So ideally if they could make a marker that was almost like a, a watercolor, you know, where it's, it's, um, basically the, you know the pressure indicates how dark or light the the marker is that would be super ideal for me with this the problem is you kind of got to wait till it gets to the point so even the the point of whatever color you you, <laughs> you know want so when you're starting let's let's try again here let, let me use a different marker we'll try a red here all right let's see if i can improve my point that's the bullet nib i want the brush nib all right so the other thing is, you know, this is going to take, this is going to add some time to your drawings because the time it takes to do these uh, little, you know, blending tricks, you know, so that, you know, if you're looking to work quickly, this is going to put a hamper on that. So, okay, so I've got, 
So let's start drawing. So again, we basically got almost nothing, and then it starts to get a little darker and a little. So if you want that tone, you've kind of got to wait to get that tone. You can't automatically get that tone, and so on. I mean, and here, I mean, it is really a cool effect for gradients. But how often are you going to do something like that where you want just a gradual gradient? I mean, sometimes I, I might just, oh, I like that color. I want something to be that color. And it's really, you're not going to be able to get that because you don't have any control over when that color starts to happen in the marker. So that's a little bit of a drawback. So I'm still looking for sort of the perfect marker that can do that. But um, these, I mean, I, I can see, I can see how these definitely would have their advantages, um, but it's still not, you know, it's still not the total solution to every, you know, marker rendering or whatever. So I'll put that back in there and, uh, uh, let's give it a shot on the actual on an actual illustration and see see how it works and we'll compare that to the Copic markers. All right, so I have a sketch. It's a little alien shaman creature that I am going to photocopy, and uh, so I've got two different versions, and I'm just going to try the same thing with both the chameleon markers and the Copic markers, and I've tried to match the colors up as close as I can. If you watch my other video where I did the Ohu versus Comic or Copic comparison, um, those were really hard to match because I mean, those we're dealing with those were like, you know, 50 cent markers. The the Chameleon are definitely better, and you know, they, so they're they're definitely more comparable to the Copics. But we'll get into a little more of the comparison, um, and I'm I'm speeding this up, and especially I'm speeding up the parts where I have to kind of hold, you know, do the infusion or whatever you call it. Uh, like you see right here, um, normally that's like about 10 seconds or more or less depending on when you want that, that color to start going. But you can kind of see what I'm doing here and it does really give a really cool, uh, just this sort of graduated effect. Now, it's, it's, there's a little bit of a learning curve and we'll get into the, the pros and cons, so that would be in a con, but we'll talk about some of the pros first, but um, you can see how it works, and you can see me doing the same technique again with the, the Copics, which you can do. If you already have Copic markers, um, you can do this technique. It doesn't work quite as well as, as the Chameleon. I mean, they're not designed for that, um, but you can do it. So don't think if you already invested in a set of Copics, um, I, I keep switching my pronunciations with Copics and Copics, because I'm used to saying Copics and a lot of people say Copics, so I'm trying to correct myself, but I always revert back, so you know what I mean. But anyway, so you can get kind of that, that effect if you already have a, a set of Copic markers. Um, but if you're looking at buying one, um, I think the, for this feature specifically, the Chameleons I think do a little better job with that, because that's, you know, that's what they're designed for. So as far as the pros and the cons, as far as the price, the chameleons are, you know, they're not quite like the Yahoo that I did where they were just, you know, very cheap, but they are cheaper than the Copic markers. So, um, for instance, the 52 set, which, you know, it's 52, but you get more colors because of, you know, because they do, you do have that gradient and you can get some different colors out of it. Um, so it really is more, but again, the stand, I'm kind of basing just the standard color because, you, like I said earlier, you kind of have to wait till you get that certain color and it doesn't last. So you can't really rely. Like if I just wanted to do something with like a lighter green, um, it wouldn't, it won't stay that way. So it, it, it's it's kind of hard to say. You can say yes, we get more colors with the chameleon, but it's not constant. So. As far as the, the base colors, they got 52 with the Chameleon and uh, Copics are way more than, they've got two different sets that have 72. I've got one of the 72 sets and I, there's probably even more than that, I don't know. Um, but you can see as I'm working with this right now, the, the, they're pretty close. I mean, um, it's they're not far off. So as far as price, um, you're going to do, do probably better with the Chameleons as far as they're a little cheaper and I don't see much difference in the quality of the actual ink. Um, they're both really good. Um, but so for for a set of 52 um, Chameleons, you're looking at about $140, $150 for a set like that. Um, whereas the Copics, if you buy a full set of 72, you're looking at about $380. Um, and uh, it, they both, the good thing is with, unlike the other comparisons I did with some of these cheaper markers, um, chameleons basically have the same, you know, this, you can, 
you can buy refills for them and you can also buy individual markers and the chameleons have tons of different sets just like Copic. So as far as how they sell it, your different options on you know different sets to get numbers of sets or if you just want to buy individual markers, you can do all that with the chameleons just like you can with the Copics. So a single chameleon is probably going to run you around $6. Um, a pin. Uh, a single Copic is probably going to be a little more seven or eight and I've seen them for less and I've seen the chameleons for less too so um, I still think you know as far as you, if you want a good starter kit that, that 52 set of these chameleons you're getting a lot better price because that brings the individual uh, marker price way down even way below six six dollars so um, that's really that's really a good deal and the other thing that the chameleons have in addition to being able to blend from just like from nothing you know that colors this blender that colors color to the actual color um, you can also buy, I, I forgot exactly what they're called, I don't know if they're called color tops or something like that, but they're basically the same thing, the top of the marker, but with the color. So you can go from like blue to orange or whatever and have a, you can have it do that. So I think you can buy the whole, you know, that 52 set plus the, um, I think it's like 50, 50 of the color tops. So you, that opens up a whole other world. Uh, of, of color and I think you can buy a set like that for probably like around 300 so there's all kinds of different options so with both different markers you get great great you know, versatility as far as options and you can start off small and build up your collection or whatever um, they are the other pluses that both Copics and chameleons are, are uh, alcohol based um, like I said, with the chameleons, they got a really nice case. Copic cases are nice. I don't. They, I mean, I think the wind goes the chameleon as far as the case. That's not a big deal for everyone, I'm sure. Um, uh, the chameleons blend really well, just like the Copics. So obviously, they're designed for that. Um, and they both have really vivid color. Um, and neither one of them have much bleed to them, so they're not going to bleed out of the edges like some of the less expensive markers. Um, one thing that I do like uh, with the chameleons is the colors that they give you um, with some of the off brands and even even the Copic markers um, sometimes they just throw in a bunch of just garbage colors that like neon colors like highlighter colors which you're never going to use with an illustration if you need a highlighter just buy a cheap highlighter I mean I don't I, I could be wrong but I don't see any reason why you would we, you would want to waste eight dollars on a Copic highlighter so sometimes they'll throw that stuff in there which is to me that's just garbage so I'd rather have some decent colors you know and it's really weird like uh, all like all in all chameleon has less colors but the the full set of chameleons I like the colors better than one of the again it's not a full set of Copics because they have plenty they have like two big sets but if you buy one of the big sets it's kind of pick or choose. I mean, a, a lot of the, those markers I just won't use because they're just the colors just aren't aren't great. If you could choose your own colors to put in one of those big sets and get it for the same price with the Copics, that would be ideal. Unfortunately, that's not the case. So, um, so yeah, cons. Uh, there is a learning curve to the the chameleons having to figure out how to do all that, and you gotta gotta move around the page to get the colors you want. So um, that is a learning curve. So that that is a con. Um, the size. Some people say that the markers are too big because um, they're really long but you, you don't but when you, they're basically in two parts so once you pull them apart they're actually smaller than the Copic so whether they're too big or too small that could be a negative for you they're round so they roll uh, again the caps don't snap on the chameleons I think the newer Copics like I said do the ones I have don't um, and uh, one of the ma main things you got to take into consideration is the color tops on the chameleons are like way off they're not even close but um, so you just gotta gotta play around and make sure you get the right color and everything but the colors are great um, and they blend really well and all in all um, yeah I mean it's a toss-up for me one of the major things is the brush tips I think that the Copic brush tips is a little better it's a little longer and broader and get bigger strokes with it but uh, the chameleon still do have that brush tip so yeah, I mean, f kind of figure out <laughs> based on what I presented, what, what you guys think. And whatever you decide to do, if you're in the market, I am leaving affiliate links in the description so you guys can check those out and purchase those online. And uh, yeah, good luck making that decision because it's a tough one. All right, so I had a lot of fun playing around with these chameleon markers, seeing how they stack up to the Copic brand. And uh, yeah, I mean, 
I don't know, they're pretty close. Uh, I don't really, I'm trying to think what the verdict is. I mean, I think it comes down to the type of work you're gonna do and everything, and if you think these uh, chameleon markers are gonna do the trick, especially if you're doing kind of gradients and everything, that's great, um, and I think they'll work for that. And uh, I'm just happy to kind of add them to my you know, arsenal of markers. But uh, yeah, I, all in all, I think they're a top-notch product, and uh, depending on what you're looking to do markers for, I mean, I can do, I can definitely do things here that I can't really do with the Copics. Of course, there are, you know, there are some definitely benefits to the Copics, just the, the their style of brush tip and everything like that. So it's sort of a toss-up. If you haven't bought any markers yet, if you're trying to go between the Copics or the Chameleons, um, yeah, I'm gonna have to leave that up to you as far as, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna present, you know, what, what I kind of came up with in my, you know, testing and everything, and then you can figure out what you guys want to do. But uh, I do think it's a, it's a great product, and uh, so, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments section, and I will see you guys later. That is all. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me here in the Art Lab. There's a lot of other great content on the channel, so click that subscribe button, and you won't miss a thing. If you're an aspiring evil genius, visit Surfworks.com for all your mad science supply needs. And if you want to contact me, hit me up in the comments section or follow me on social media. I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you then.